Hello, I'm Atsuba George and I'm so glad and excited to be bringing God's truth to you today. We are in the month of March and there is a positioning taking place for the children of God. Hear me, God has great plans for you and that plan is coming into fulfillment in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Before we go into today's broadcast, can we call for that daily bread? Join me right now as we declare this word. Say, Father, I demand and I receive right now my daily bread. It's coming to me now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Why do we make this declaration apart from the fact that he commanded us to do it? Now, now it's so it's so amazing. I remember telling yesterday that he will give you instructions. When you ask, he will give you instructions. And when he gives you instructions, that is how he keeps you safe. So Jesus said, men ought always to pray and not to faint. Now, why? How does this work? So now the Lord have said, every broadcast, you must lead my children to call forth and make demands for their daily bread. Now, we, we've been doing this for a while. And guess what? Suddenly, if you're observant and you've been faithful with this, suddenly you will begin to realize that there are worries I used to have before and those worries are gone right now. Now, there are people who are not observant and because they formed a character of always asking, asking, asking and begging, 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 they will not even be observant that things have changed. Yeah, yeah, I'm telling you the truth. There are people who, even if someone gives them, they've never seen one million naira before. Even if someone gives them one million naira today, in a few days, in a few weeks' time, they will still go back to the same attitude of begging. Even with that money, they will still be begging. Because in their mind, they're like, ah, uh, let me, let me, uh, this money will finish you, so I better start making plans for the next. That's, that's, it's a habit people have formed. And you've got to repent from that habit. Borrowing is a habit. That's, that's, got to repent from that habit. So, but, but what do I do? There are other options. There are other options. You don't realize them because you've locked up your mind. Especially when you have a situation where there is someone you can run to, to borrow that money from or to, to ask and beg from. You see, those things become your limiting factors. You can change from that. You can repent from that attitude. You see, whatever is that thing you need, your father has made provision for it. It's now your job to find it. It's now your job to find it. If you have someone you always run to every time, think about it. Why don't you become the person that is available for someone else to run to? You make up your mind. This thing don't just happen. How do they happen? Prayer. That's what I've been sharing with you. Prayer. Prayer. You keep asking the Spirit of God. You know, like we declare every day, Lord, I demand my daily bread. I demand my daily bread. I demand my... Now, you can be saying that without thinking, but God loves people who use their brains. And then you suddenly realize, hey, someone gave me money yesterday. How did that money come? I didn't ask. How did he know I, I, I needed some money? Oh, my father must have told him. Eh, that's why we declare our daily bread. Oh, he did give me daily bread yesterday. Whoa, Lord. And then it's an opportunity for you to give thanks. The moment you see the hand of God in your life, take note of it. Give thanks for it. Why are you giving thanks for it? And don't just give thanks to the Lord for it. When you're done giving thanks to the Lord for it, speak out in testifying. Shout it everywhere. Hey, 
See what the Lord did for me. Like, oh, you know, sometimes we share our testimony. Someone's like, this small thing. Is that why you're just screaming all over the place? Yes. You know why? Because you are stating that I understand this thing came from the Lord. I understand this money came from the Lord. This provision came from the Lord. So it is established now that the Lord knows me. Do you understand that? It is established now that the Lord recognizes me. And, and that means, hey, I will never be broke another day of my life. I just needed this evidence. Now, is it that you will not get into situations like that anymore? You may get into situations like, what do you do then? You remember the testimony that had happened before. And he said, oh, you know what? I'm not going to suffer. I'm not going to be put to shame. Why? Because, see, God will not have done that thing if he did not recognize you in the first place. That's why it's important in our testimonies, we, in our minds, we are clear that this is the hand of God. Not, you no, know, sometimes say, it must be God now. If it is not God, how will somebody? No, you must be very clear. This is the act of God. So when you pray and the Spirit of God begins to give you information, the Spirit of God begins to tell you because he gives you wisdom, knowledge, and joy. And so when you pray, wisdom begins to come to you. Sometimes the wisdom can come in form of prayer points. Pray like this. Sometimes to come with an instruction. Go see so -so -so person. Call so -so -so person. Go to so -so -so place and do so -so -so. It just comes to you like, oh wow. Yes, Lord. Now that's how you, it's important you know how God speaks to you. How does God speak? It's very simple. Majority of the time is what you call your mind. But how do you know this is God and not your mind? When it adds information to you. When it adds knowledge to you. When it adds wisdom to you. You may be striving over something. You may be thinking of how to get something done. You know, why are you just thinking? Suddenly, a thought comes to you. Why don't you do it this way? And then you think about like, wow. How come I never thought about that before? That was in your mind. That word came from an external. You, you understand what I'm saying? Now that's how you know this is God. And of course, of course, the Bible lets us know in James 3 verse 17. The wisdom that is from above, how to recognize it. It is pure. It is something you will have to yield to. Your brain concern lets us know in James 3. Why don't you just go and ask the person for forgiveness? And they go, no, I can't. I can't ask for forgiveness. You, you heard the word of the Lord. Praise God. And you are fighting it right now. And then he's like, no. You know, after you do that a while, and you now come again and say, Lord, no, then it comes again. Go ask the person for forgiveness. Why? Because one of the qualities or properties of the wisdom that is from above is it will cost you to yield. It will cost you to yield. And God will do that. It's, it is the quality of the wisdom that is from above. It doesn't exalt pride. No, it doesn't exalt pride. It is the wisdom that is from above that will speak to you. Say, go and apologize to your child. My child. Me. Apologize to my child. That is always right. Mom is always right. But guess what God is doing? He's dealing with you. Praise God. He, he is putting you in check that you are still submitted to him. Now, why would you apologize to your child? Because he told you to do so. So, when you do that, you are submit, showing submission to him. You are not degrading yourself in the presence of your children. Or whoever the Lord says you should go and apologize to. Now, that's how the word of God comes to us. I told you, when it comes, it adds knowledge to you. It brings insights to you. Now, you may fight it. You may reject it. But it will surely come. Because, see, God, he is ever faithful. You know, we, we, were, we were doing uh, teaching with my wife a few weeks ago. And then we spoke about Esau. And how Esau... 
despite the prophecy that came concerning him, everything that happened in his life was still by choice. Because the fact that the prophecy came concerning him and Jacob didn't stop instructions from coming to Esau. Esau get, got the same instructions Jacob got. But Esau chose how he responded to the instruction. And that is what brought him disaster. The same thing with Rehoboam. Think about it. Rehoboam, even though there have been a prophecy in the days of Solomon that God is going to divide the kingdom and give ten parts to a stranger, to a servant of Solomon, and keep the other part. But hey, listen, that fulfillment didn't just come because of the prophecy. It came by the foolishness of Rehoboam. Now, foolishness, I say, because he had sound wisdom given to him. But he rather chose a foolish wisdom that was given to him. Why? Because he wasn't willing to yield. That's what the wisdom from above does to you. It makes you yield. Let me, let me read that and, and just share the qualities of this so that you understand. James, thank you Lord Jesus. James chapter 3 and verse 17. It says, but the wisdom that is from above is first pure. Is first pure. Then peaceable. Now I'm telling you, how do I know this is what God is telling me to do? First of all, you will know it's pure. Your heart knows what is pure. You know, sometimes we, we've got, you know, times, okay, someone is praying, you know, Okay, Lord, I have your money with me, the tithe. Okay, I just received some money. I've got your tithe with me, Lord. Can you guide me on what to do with it? And people say, how do I know when God is guiding me? How do I know when God is speaking to me? This is it. Say, so first of all, it will be pure. It will be pure. It will be peaceable. The more you think about it, the more you just think, wow. You know, God says, send your title to a successful person. Like, ah, because well, no. you've not been trained that way. At first, you will have that, you know, wondering ah, or how. But then, the more you think about it, the more you dwell, about, dwell on it, you will realize that this is pure. When I give this person, the person will know that he didn't ask me nothing. I mean, this is pure. This is from a pure heart. Then he says, it's peaceable. Wow. I just wonder how this person is going to feel when I respond like this that God is instructing me to do. Then he says, it's gentle, willing to yield, willing to yield. Now, this is it. He, you are the one that is going to yield. Like, give it to the person. Like, Spirit say, forgives us someone or whoever has hurt you. Like, ah, oh, Lord. If I forgive this person, this person will be thinking that. Oh, sometimes, go to someone or whoever has a person. I say, Lord, the person will be thinking now that I have plenty of money. That's none of your business. What is he calling you to do? Yield. And when you say, well, uh, the person will be thinking I have plenty of money. You will not start asking for me. The Lord says, cast that care over to me. <laughs> it's good. Now says, it's willing to be full of mercy. Full of mercy. You, you realize this person didn't deserve this thing. That's how you know this is the act of God's mercy. It's full of mercy. And good fruits. Good fruits. And you find out when you eventually obey the Lord. And say, hey, the, the Lord asked me to give you some money. You say, whoa. Wow. Whoa. <laughs> God. Do, do you know that I, I was praying to God last night and I told the Lord, I need this thing today. And now he's come. What's that? Good fruit. Praise God. Yeah, that's what it is. Good fruits. It bears testimonies. And then it says, without partiality, you're not thinking, hmm. Because you see, when we give according to the flesh, this is what we face. Most times you are partial. You think, I like this pastor more. He preach, his preaching used to bless me. 
I, I remember many years ago because, you know, the Lord had told me to give out something that was very precious to me. And the Lord told me who to give it to. And I was thinking, Lord, why should I give it to? This is very precious to me. Why are you telling me to give it to this person? I've not even heard this pastor preach before. Praise God. Yeah, I knew he was a pastor. Uh, but, but I've never been in his service and listened to him preach before. But I've, I told him, I said, Lord, why don't I give it to this other person? This was many years ago. Why don't I give it to this other person? Uh, he's been blessing me because, uh, I mean, it's just right. And the Lord said, no, give it to this other person. I told the Lord, I said, no, I'll give it to this person. Because when you want to give, you know, that's how our mind works. You want to give something precious. You want to be sure that you are giving it in, 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 in something, in a good soil. You understand what I'm talking about? And I said, no, Lord, I'm going to give it to this other person. And guess what? I called this person and called. He wasn't picking his call. And each time he doesn't pick his call, I hear the Lord says, you know that's not what I want you to do. I said, no, Lord, I want to give it to this person. Because that thing was really precious to me. Until I yielded. I said, okay, Lord, I will be. And then I called this other person. On one hand, the person picked the call. <laughs> I said, well, the Lord have asked me to, to see you and give you. And guess what? That act opened a door for me that I've been waiting on the Lord for. Now, I didn't know that. So you see, good fruits, that, that's the testimony. No partiality. I was trying to be partial. But the wisdom that is from above, it's God that will tell you, give your tithes to somebody you don't even like. <laughs> oh God, why? No partiality. Oh, we bless you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I pray this wisdom is resting on everyone listening and watching right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, your voice is becoming loud in our hearts. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. I'll see you tomorrow. Until then, God bless you.